Good morning, everyone. My name is Randy Haskins. I represent the Underground Alliance Martial Science Research Association. Um, we're doing this video now to discuss another movement. We're going to discuss this movement right here. One more time. All right, so um, a lot of people employ the concept of blocking within their uh, systems, um, but it really doesn't address real world violence. If you block something in a fight, you're behind the curve. Um, there's a lot of different things uh, that happen in real world violence. Um, that karate, true karate curriculum or exploration of karate curriculum will address. So with that being said, let me just say that there's two modes of travel of anything coming at you. Two modes of travel. That's straight and outside arcing. But if you control the fight by the distance, combat distance will motivate the aggressor to straighten their arm, even if it's one of those wild street hooks, they'll straighten it to reach you. So it all ends up straight. Also, um, karate kata, which is basic curriculum, um, teaches us certain things. The movement within the kata teach us uh, greater information. And the fact that 99% of the katas start to the left, is telling us that the majority of the world is right-handed. If one out of every 10 people were right-handed, meaning the majority of your attackers would come left side, strong side, then 99% of the katas would start to the right. But since 99% of the katas start to the left, it's telling us that the majority of the world is right-handed. And it's also telling us to keep our weapon side in back and our shield in front. With that being said, my student, Ryan Brown, is going to come out and he's going to attack me with his right hand, like most people will. The number one habitual act of physical violence is a punch to the face. So, he comes out, he wants to hit me. That's his goal. We're going to use this motion to pragmatically defend against that attack. This is what's happening. As we have said in the last video, the first action you execute should neutralize the opponent's ability to continue the fight. I repeat, the first action you execute should neutralize, should have the ability and or probability of neutralizing the opponent's ability to continue the fight or immobilize him or her entirely. All right, with that being said, the first action should do that slow. Boom. Right here is a slight hyperextension of his arm, which motivates him to pull his arm back. Also, the slight hyperextension of this arm prohibits him from using the other side and continuing the fight. One more time. Low elbow, hand hooks, fingers hook. I'm not grabbing, I'm just hooking. One more time. Now, his natural instinct is to pull, and I have a hammer fist to his temple, to his jaw, forearm to his neck, or hammer fist to his neck, forearm to his arm, 
strike to his neck represents a rising block motion, a grab, and a finish off throw. Not all those at once, those were separate entities. I was just showing you different options. One more time. Again. Turn this way. It comes in. Hyperextension. Hammer fist. Wrist lock. One more time. So there's many different options, many different paths you can go to after you neutralize their opponents, the opponent's ability to continue to fight. I can go hammer fist, hammer fist, forearm. I can do many different things. Again, he pulls, I strike the forearm, go up to open up my grab. Many different paths you can take after the initial neutralization of the opponent's ability to continue the fight. Um, explore. Um, contact me if you want. I'll put my number in the link this time. And uh, let's talk. Let's, let's.